It's time to pull those belts tight, race fans. The Front Stretch is coming at you. Presented by Joe's Karting and Council Bluffs. Now, here's Dan Taylor and Dirk Houston. Well, good morning to you, race fans, and welcome to the Front Stretch, presented by Joe's Karting and Council Bluffs, online at joeskarting.com. Fast-paced white-knuckle racing just across the river on 23rd Avenue in Council Bluffs. Get over to Joe's Karting today. And by the way, Joe's Karting has some nice, snazzy new hats available, just like the Front Stretch does. Dirk, you're sporting your Flex Fit hat, which... Uh, I really like the design of them, but I'm not a big fan of the flex fit because, like I talked about, it really presses my little brain in, and I, I'm not a big fan of that. But uh, now, thanks so you're to Joe's Carter, you got a fat head. I do have a saying. fat head. It, it, I need <laughs> it, it ain't for that because of all the hair you got it's, on it. <laughs> it's for that big brain of mine. It, it, it's got to have a big skull. But uh, now we have snapback hats. So, uh, like my girlfriend, she likes to have the snapback hats because then she can put her ponytail through it. So we've got 16 of those available, and you're they're going to put be... your ponytail through yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me, let me grab my. <laughs> your Mun? My, let me grow my mullet back out, <laughs> and I'll tuck it through I there. just put it in a mun. Yeah, there we go. That's <laughs> Back to Joe's carding. Yeah. If, uh, if anybody uh, doesn't know, I'm sure everybody knows, they uh, do some parts out of there now. Mm-hmm. And uh, Buddy has been posting, he recently posted a barrel of methanol at a, at a very reasonable price. So you might want to, if anybody out there needs some methanol to... Uh, uh, take down to uh, Vegas or anything like that, you know, if you're going to travel with it or mm-hmm. you need some for testing or whatever, give Buddy a call and check out that barrel. Get over to Joe's Carding today, joescarding.com, Carding with the K for more information on that. Head over there today and do a little bit of indoor karting racing. If you didn't see, we posted the Homestead Viewing Party coming up. As always, uh, we're going to have great prizes to give away. We're going to have some of our uh, great sponsors there. Obviously, Quaker Steak and Lou will have some great specials for us. Rick Haven Ridge Wealth Partners will be there. We'll run some pools, and uh, I'm sure Chris will put something up for who can pick the race winner type mm-hmm. thing. So, yeah, we'll have some stuff going on, and uh, we'll have uh, some koozies to give away and uh, might just throw a hat or two in the yep. mix. We usually sell the hats, but uh, we might throw a hat or two into the mix to give away. We'll see what's going on. I think we have, like, over 300 autographed items in our prize vault, and, you know, only 16 of them are going to be claimed by Pickham's season-long contestants that are in the running for the championship. So uh, there's plenty of items for you to come and get. Just come out to the Homestead Viewing Party November 18th. This so is going to start things at about noon or 1230. Race starts at 130. It's going to be about a three-and-a-half-hour affair. We'll crown a champion for both the NASCAR playoffs and the NASCAR championship season, and then we'll also crown a champion for the Pickham's contest presented by Rick Haven Ridge of Wealth Partners. Today we've got a big show live up for you today. We're going to try to recap everything that happened at the Roval because it was a lot and it was crazy. We don't have enough time to do everything. And it had implications in our five-week contest that it is un- it's never happened before. I never thought it would ever happen, and it's happened. So you'll have to hear about that in turn We thought we were covered, but we weren't. And it had Big implications over for JJ. <laughs> Big uh, or, uh, uh, NASCAR Hall of Famer Ron Hornaday, Hornaday and five-time uh, Truck Series champion, excuse me, four-time Truck Series champion, 55-time NASCAR winner, and modified chassis builder Ron Hornaday will join us in Ron turn Hornaday number two. Hornaday Jr. There's, right. There's three of them. Yep. Uh, is there – okay. and Yeah. Senior, junior, and the third. In the third. Uh, but it's going to be junior that's going to join us, the second one. Uh, then in turn number three, Zach Ralston, driver of the ARCA series for uh, – in the uh, – over in uh, central Iowa. He lives well, he's over in uh, – from Iowa, but right. now in North Carolina. And we've talked to Zach before, so our Good. fans should be familiar with him. And he's actually going to try setting us up uh, our crewmen for a day, people. The, the Those that won are going to get a little extra uh, love on Friday night of the uh, – of the weekend for for that, uh, oh, cool. that Kansas Series weekend, so they're going to be able to hang out with Zach in the Arca Series, and that way you're going to be really be able to experience what all these teams go through. Well, I know we're going to do that this year. We mm-hmm. usually think about trying to head over and see what Lakeside's got going on, but this year, since we've got to know Zach a little bit, we're going to go over and check him out. So that'll be coming up in turn three. We'll talk with Zach Rolson, and then in turn number four, we'll talk a few of the NASCAR news and notes. There's been some big stories, but no silly season news really that's come out in the last week since we last talked last Sunday morning. Yeah, and the then. Old, uh, the only thing is the 2018 silly season that Casey Kane is not going to race yep. again. So. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we will preview today's race at Dover, which is on NBCSN at noon with green flag waving at 1 o'clock. All right, let's talk about the Roval race recap. Roval. 
What a, in my opinion, I think this was a good race through 90% of it. And then, like you would expect, we get down to the end of the race. Things start shuffling a little bit. Drivers start pushing a little bit harder. And it takes, it doesn't even take a rocket scientist to understand. When you add more corners and more stopping areas that you have to hit hard under the brakes and get around, that adds for more opportunity of the bump and run, the move somebody out of the way, the outbreak somebody into the corner, and, and for a lot of position changes. Well, I think NASCAR, you know, along that line, did a very good job. They had said all along, every time they ran several tests there, mm-hmm. and, you know, like a dozen cars each test. It wasn't one guy getting to go run around it. There were several cars, and uh, they kept moving you know, the curbing, some mm-hmm. of the walls. And, I mean, even down to the, the day before the race, they moved that wall at the end of the chicane because both uh, uh, Eric Jones and, and Bubba Wallace both destroyed cars. And all that, it, it was a it was a portable wall. It yeah. was two it was rows of, of tires, tires covered yeah. with some vinyl. It was really amazing to me how much oh. damage was done to the front of those cars when they would hit that well, thing. Well, the 43 was just, oh, my. Yeah, I mean those yeah. are you. You look at there's no getting that car back to shape. Yeah, Just, that car's toast. Yeah, but like I said, they moved that wall and and you know they were trying to help people, you know, and and help the race, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and the other thing about this race was where it was positioned. If this race is race number ten, mm-hmm. I don't think it's near the race because the guys aren't going to race near as hard. Jimmy Johnson doesn't go for that. Well, no, he probably does go for that. You think so? Yeah. i just surprised he did it when he would have moved on, just finishing yeah. where he was. I'm glad. I, well, we'll you talk know, about that in a little bit. When, yeah. when you're in the 10th in the race, heck, yes, you're going yeah. for the win. You Those, know? The, well, they kept calling them the turtles, and they were extra blue curbing they would put on top of the curbing to encourage drivers to not go past those. I was really surprised to hear those were four to six inches tall. Yeah. And there was a couple of guys, like, I think Brad Kislowski was the one that I remember that hit one of those turtles, and it it bent the front of his uh, car, car the splitter up, the so splitter up. there was less downforce when he was going through the uh, corners, which was high speed areas. Uh, it was a great race. I was really happy with it. I think everything played out exactly how NASCAR wanted to. You saw a lot more sponsorship at the track, which we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, Joey Chitwood, no, it's uh, Joey Chitwood's not the president there. Um, uh, Marcus there. Smith is the president of uh, SMI. Uh, he's the son of Bruton Smith. Right. And he said that ticket sales at Charlotte were up. We know ratings were up almost double. Well, it's the only road course you can sit in the grandstand and see the whole thing. Yeah. That was one part I really loved about yep. it. Yeah. And and they said that everything was, was a lot better than it's been in years past. It's not hard to look at that race and say they needed to do something because, in my opinion, Charlotte hasn't been a great race because it's such an aero-dependent track. And we saw how big of a difference the aero package, when we talk about the All-Star, how big of a difference that package made versus when they ran it the next weekend at the Coca-Cola 600. And I've got some interesting stats. If we get to it in turn number four, I want to talk to you about that shows how much that package helped at Charlotte specifically. But back to the Roval, we come down to the final lap. Johnson's got a great car. Truex has a pretty good car, but Johnson's coming. And I thought for the whole time that Johnson was going to catch him in turns three and four. He didn't, and he tried to outbreak him going into the final chicane. Excuse me. The oval turns three and four. I think it was turns two, 13 and 14. 14 yeah, something like something, that. I, I'm just going to take me a long time to get used to that. Uh, and then he outbra- He overbreaks it, spins the car, and completely unbeknownst to him, he backs into Truex and ruins Truex's day. The series of events that unfolded after that, with Johnson then getting going and stopping. He had to stop. He did, absolutely. And NASCAR clarified that position earlier in the race. When Kyle Busch did a similar thing, he stopped. Oh, there were several cars through the yeah. course of the day that had and, to do it. And NBC was kind of asking live over the air, I wonder if NASCAR would have ruled that as when he spun as him stopping. And then he could have kept going, or did he need to stop again? And NASCAR actually came over to the booth and said, no, we deemed that he needed to stop a second time. Yeah, they put that right on the radio because Chad knew that information and was yeah. yelling at him to stop. Yeah. Come to a complete stop. Come to a complete stop. I'm sitting at the house, and I, something I haven't done in a long time, I jump up because I think that Jimmy's still got a chance to grab a gear and win this race. I picked Jimmy for the, fight, for the, for the season-long contest. I wanted Jimmy to win. So Jimmy stops, and I'm screaming, and I'm thinking, get going, get going, grab a gear. He finishes eighth in a three-way tie for the final two spots between Kyle Larson, Eric Almarola, and Jimmy Johnson. And and Kyle Larson's only in this because the 96 of of, uh, Jeffrey Jeffrey Earnhardt Earnhardt spins. 
on the final corner, can't get the car fired again. He does this NASCAR heat bounce off the wall thing that Carl Edwards tried to do at Kansas years ago. Kyle Larson makes it work, runs past the start finish line, joins a three-way tie for the final two spots. And because Jimmy Johnson's eighth place finish at that race was his best finish and it doesn't beat the other two guys' finishes in the other three races of the first round, they move on. And the seven-time champ is left holding the bag. And then everybody's complaining because Kyle Larson's not making the minimum time. And as NASCAR explained, you've got three laps to make minimum time. Mm-hmm. There were only three laps left in the race. <laughs> right. So there was nothing, you know, below the table or, or anything. You know, it was all above board. It's clean and in the rules. And it's, it's a point that now that something has happened, NASCAR can go back and look at it and say, okay, if there's only three laps left in the race, then it's something different. Now they can add a sub part to that category. But they won't. NASCAR never thought that this would ever happen. Well, yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have expected it because, I mean, let's face it. I mean, if you're a Jimmy Johnson fan, you're saying he's a racer. He went for the win. I'm sorry. That move was stupid. Now he has no chance for a championship. If he just goes ahead and takes his second place finish and moves on and fights another day, yeah, uh, I mean, but, the, he but, it, now if he would have been fifteenth in points and needed the win, you go for it, absolutely. But Dirk, come on, the whole reason why we have this points system, the chase system, the playoff system, the elimination rounds, the whole reason is because fans were tired of drivers. Being happy with second place because it was a big, it was a better points day. No, the drivers were unhappy with Jimmy Johnson finishing twenty third at Homestead and still being the champion. Same point. I mean, that's the same point. It's this whole system was because we, because NASCAR and fans want more drivers like what Jimmy did on Sunday, and we all understand it ended up working out bad for him. But had he gotten that win, had he gotten by, past Martin Truex Jr. It would have been a completely different story. It had been Jimmy Johnson battles back for a win, and finally, and I mean, it had been ten thousand stories of this. Instead, we're sitting here talking about how dumb of a move it was. But I love it. I want him to make that move more often because Brad Keselowski got out of the car after getting some heat two, three years ago in the in the playoffs and said, "You guys, I don't get paid by the captain to finish second or third. I get paid to go for the win." He goes for the win. He wrecks his car. He finishes twenty fifth. But I want my guys going for the win. I don't well, want them going for second place, even when second place is the smarter move. Well, and see, you know, if it's a smarter move, that's what you do. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And he was not going to get the win no matter what happened because Truex was going to crash him if, if he didn't crash Truex. If they'd have come through that last turn together, Johnson would have been in the wall. But what a great example of how the system is working. Hmm? I'm not going to argue Martin with that. Because Martin Truex Jr., had there not been the five bonus playoff points, that win means nothing to Martin Truex Jr. Other than maybe a little bit more pay, whatever. You want to get down into the nitty-gritty of it, but... That win means absolutely nothing if there wasn't for the five bonus playoff points that would carry into the round of 12, round of eight, and then and from there. Is that the president calling you again? Almost. <laughs> it is a former racer, though. <laughs> okay. But uh, but how, pr- how much proof that that's working? Those two guys would have, what, what Tony Stewart said, would have wrecked their, each other's moms to get that win because it was the it was so valuable to both of them. For picking up that win. And that's a great testament to how the system is working. Yeah. Uh, again, if if this wouldn't have been a cutoff race, mm-hmm. going for the win would have been the right thing to do. And I think this, this race is not going anywhere, folks. Mm-hmm. I mean, with this race being in the cutoff race, the announcers did a very good job of keeping everybody updated on <laughs> where guys were in the points. What a tough job, too. Well, At oh. the end of that race, they nobody had any idea, and I imagine NASCAR was beating their head on the table for a few minutes, waiting for the computer to calculate who finished where. And, and <laughs> well, and then, and then they had to go through their rule book because you had yeah. three guys tied. Okay, yeah. what are we doing with this, this, and mm-hmm. this? You know. Hey, uh, we we've gone a little bit long because the Roval was just such a crazy recap. Uh, let's try to break it down real quick. Johnson, Dylan, Hamlin, and Jones all get eliminated. Hamlin and Jones really had no choice, no chance. Dylan was the surprise because he. He was 10 points above going into the race, and he hit just about every single corner there was to hit at at that track. Uh, Just had an absolutely horrible day. Ends up going from a 10-point advantage to falling out, and uh, we know Jimmy Johnson, we just talked about that, that he was uh, in it, and then out of it, and then in it, and then then by the hair of 
of whatever of the three way yeah, guy. He was he was back out again. Uh, so what a uh, a great weekend! And now we go to Dover. Such a dynamic track and and just a tough track to to talk to tame. And we'll we'll talk about that going into turn number four. But see, that's that feeds into Johnson's stupid move because he's got seven he's really wins good. at really Dover good. or something really like that. Good. I mean, he's won a bunch of races there. In the next two rounds, he's really good at. So it, I, I get it, but still, I would rather him go for the win than go for the points any day of the week because that makes it exciting. You don't want you don't want guys settling. All right, we're going to take a break. Ron Hornaday Jr. and Zach Ralston still to come on the front stretch. For almost 70 years, and Sarah Kelly Sewell have been Nebraska's premier personal injury firm. Race drivers, fans, and their families have been calling Sunset Speedway's Craig Kelly for over 30 years. The IKS firm focuses first on your healing and appropriate medical care, then they focus on getting you great results. Craig Kelly and his experienced team at IKS stand ready to handle your injury claims in both Nebraska and Iowa. If you or a loved one have been injured, Google Craig Kelly or call him at 402-391-4000. This week's young gun on the front stretch is 17-year-old micro sprint driver Bailey Lovett. Bailey fell in love with dirt racing while helping her dad, Josh Voorhees, work on cars during the week and root him on at the track on the weekends. After sitting on the sidelines and being a crew member for four years, Bailey got her start this season behind the wheel of the 2V Dabco chassis competing at Washington Speedway, Jefferson County Speedway, Junction Motor Speedway, in Clay County Fairgrounds. She picked up a heat race win and is in contention for Rookie of the Year while sitting fourth in points in the Jay Husker series. Thanks to the support of her parents, Molly and Josh, her grandparents, and great fans, Bailey may reach her goal to someday compete alongside her inspiration, Shaley Bade, in the Nebraska 360 Sprint Series. Until then, keep your eye out for this week's Young Gun behind the wheel of the 2V Beatrice Sonic a and Fab AutoZone Micro Sprint. Thanks to Craig Kelly from Insara Kelly and Sewell Personal injury attorneys for his support of this week's young gun bailey love it on the front stretch every race car driver has run into the same problem it's well past normal parts store closing hours but you need that one to finish your car the guys who brought you white knuckle racing by the river bring you joe's karting racing parts and tire store open until 10 p.m monday to thursday and open until 11 p.m on friday and saturday a parts store that fits your after hours schedule and you can turn a few laps at joe's karting while you're waiting for your part to get pulled from the their warehouse joescarting.com for more information this fall experience the suspense as heroes clash metal to metal with heartbreak get lost in a drama without the predictable ending no sappy romance no special effects just one adrenaline filled day where pure speed drives the plot coming soon to a track near you the hollywood casino 400 playoff elimination race only at kansas speedway october 21st tickets at kansasspeedway.com rated you for unexpected we're hooked up in turn two and still showing the green flag on the front stretch Welcome back to the Fresh Stretch, rolling into turn number two, and it's time to sit down with a NASCAR Hall of Famer, four-time Camping World uh, Truck Series champion, and a 55-time NASCAR winner. And most famously known for Kyle Busch crashing him out and getting a suspension. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's the most famous thing. Do you think, Ron? Well, good morning, gentlemen, or afternoon. Uh, the bad part is still in the back of my mind, so it must be something. <laughs> yeah, y- y- they always example. talk about they always talk about how you drivers have long memories, and that's probably one of them that sticks with you for. It's going to be sticking with you for a long time. Well, we might have been saying five time champion if it wasn't for that race. You never yeah. know. Absolutely. You well, never know. Uh, it sticks with you. Had one hell of a career, though. I mean, it, it, to, to win that many championships, to win that many races, and really you were known as, as a staple in the truck series. You made your way into the Xfinity series and, and the Cup series here and there a little bit, but really you made your bread and butter and you made your hay in the truck series. You got it. I mean, I don't know why I kept going back there. I guess I just liked Wayne Otten and all the officials there. <laughs> it was a home home away from home, I guess. Yeah. It's a fun series. I mean, I don't think a lot of people give it too much time, but if, if they did, they watched four or five races. It's really the beat and banging that a lot of a lot of fans hope or wish the Cup Series was more like. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when we first started the Truck Series in 95, it, it was nothing go- going to go over a mile racetrack. And now it's at a mile and a half. I mean, the smallest track you go to is Martinsville. And, you know, you get like three or four shows like that now, and they're all, you know, super speedways and ha- a mile and a half racetrack. So it's kind of kind of back to boring, but it's still the best racing out there. Yeah, absolutely. And since then, since you've uh, stepped away from your NASCAR career, you've uh, you've started to get down into the Dirt Series, and you're now a modified chassis builder. I, I, you could say I, I, I am, and I 
I was. How's that? Uh, that'll work. <laughs> so, Tell me about the was. I still, <laughs> I still have people I help out, but it's still any kind of racing. Everybody thinks your car's different, and they think your car's speeded up. And I get, you know, at my age of 60 years old, I'm tired of listening to whiners. <laughs> you know, you can't. I'm, I'm so politically correct trying to tell them you just can't drive, dude. I, I don't know what to say. I'm sorry that <laughs> it, it, it people can do that. You know, anything but the absolute truth is something, uh, not something I would expect from you. I, yeah. I don't think you've ever been one to uh, to uh, to split hairs or to or to, or to definitely pull punches. doesn't mince words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so my daughter would help me run the run the sassy shop and the whole deal, and Billy Workman and my grandson, everybody. And uh, the guy called my daughter up and she said, "Man, I am, I, I'm, just, I, I just beside myself. I can't believe what your dad told me." And he goes, well, "So what? What do you say? Well, he told me about getting in this corner. You got to make an apex. You got to do this." And he's telling me how to drive. And he says, well, what, "How'd that offend you, my dad?" I get paid to tell people that. Well, the way he said it, he just chewed my ass out. <laughs> <laughs> paid, paid too much attention to the film, evidently. <laughs> I guess, yeah, yeah. So. Did you start on dirt and then make your way into the truck series, into NASCAR, or did you make your way into dirt after NASCAR? I was in uh, motocross, and I got my factory ride, and I ran Friday night, and I was riding Saturday night, and then Sunday morning, Sunday at Sprockets Park, and I hurt myself real bad and, and ruined my leg. Got into go-karts and dirt and ran that for two years. And I met my beautiful wife, and, you know, I was working on everybody's race car. She says, why don't you build your own race car instead of working on everybody else's? So my first race was 1979 at Antelope Belly Fairgrounds and a 64 four-door Mercury, and I started running dirt for the first three or four years. And uh, didn't you spend a lot of time? I know I took a little tour up by a track in California, north of Fontana. I don't know, quite a ways, uh, Willow Springs. Didn't you do it, some racing? It was there? right. Yep, it was pretty close. My, actually, my, my son won the championship when he was 14 up there in a, in a, in a street stock up there. But it was it was asphalt back then. So, um, yeah, it's, it's changed the dirt right now. And I haven't never ran the dirt track, but I've ran the little smaller track there. And I've ran the road course up there. And it was only like a, an hour from our house. So it was between there and Bakersfield. So it, it was it was a close racetrack for us. Yeah, I had a brother that was stationed in the Air Force out at Edwards. And uh, he took me over by there because he'd taken his kids out there. The day they we were there, they had uh, the super bikes were uh, testing on the road course. And the oval was asphalt at that time. I'm going to say that was in 04. Because uh, I was out there between the truck races at uh, Vegas and California. I stayed out there for a week. And you mentioned uh, uh, your son, Ronnie the uh, Third. What's he doing? I haven't talked to him. I mean, I saw him at a truck race at Kansas several years ago. It was the last time I was able to, sp- to speak with him. And uh, is he working with the chassis shop too then? or? No, he's, he's he's one of them smart guys and got out of racing. And he, uh, he's got a graphic store with my wife. I should say my wife started it. And then they... He, when he got out of that, he's, they got it really successful, and they're trying to sell it right now. But they're in, a, in the last three years in a vape, a vape store. It's called Hornco Liquids, and they're just really doing well with it. So it's pretty good. cool. Good deal. That's good yeah. to hear. So you're going to be joining us at our neck of the woods for the Cornhusker Classic coming up uh, this weekend, October uh, 12th and 13th at I-80 Speedway. How did this whole deal with your car ending up at Speedway Motors and Kevin Larkins, how did that whole thing come about? The bad part coming up there now, I called Kevin the other day. I said, what do I wear? He said, well, you better bring pants. And so I guess it's cooling down a little bit up there. I'm, I've, I've still got my, my farmer stand with my ankles are white. My legs are tan, so I was going to show them off to you guys. But I guess I'm not going to be able to do that. <laughs> you better bring a raincoat yeah, and a snowsuit. Can, listen, we can oh. go farmer tan toe-to-toe with you, anybody in that pits. <laughs> <laughs> and you're talking, yeah. you're talking white and black cookie comparison here. Yeah. <laughs> One of the cars that you've built, one of the modifieds that you've built, has ended up over at uh, Speedway Motors. Are you going to be driving it, or is somebody that you're going to be hiring going to be driving that car at the Cornhusker? Well, we're going to find out. I got, I got, a, I got a ringer. I hope in the bag. He's got a plane ticket, but you know, if I mention his name, you, you kind of know if he'll show up or not. But I'm sure he will. Uh, Kyle Strickler's going to help me out. That car hadn't been on the track. It's the first IMCA car I've ever built. Uh, like you said, Kevin Larkins called me a year ago. And uh, said, hey, you want to build me a car for the, the PRI show? And I said, man, I'd love to. But they sent all the parts down, so I kind of slide the chassis and the body and everything. So we're going to have to get up there on the Wednesday and hopefully shake it down or at least go through the car because it's, it's been on the racetrack, but it hasn't really raced anything. And I don't know how competitive it is because I've never built an IMCA car. So mm-hmm. we'll see if it passes all the rules. I know when I first went to the PRI show, the guy said, well, that's not legal. That's not legal. What are you talking about? <laughs> My bumper wasn't long enough in the front. I had wickers on the back. So I had to come bring it back here and get a facial and then send it back up to Kevin. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a lot of drivers. What do you mean that's illegal? That's, that's okay. That's that'll, that'll be fine. <laughs> I remember a talk like that with Clint Boyer before he ever got into the asphalt stuff down at Lakeside. So Yeah, I, I just don't know how those guys measure it. I tried to show them how I measure it. They don't work. I don't know why they measure it the wrong way. 
<laughs> well, first off, the problem is the driver or the chassis manufacturer is measuring it. That's problem one. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna tell you something about I and J. You know, I, I built. I probably, you know, and my big, my biggest thing in racing when we were, my wife and I were married in California, we had victory circle race cars, and our biggest deal was Phoenix, the Copper Classic. We had twenty, there was thirty six cars started the field, and twenty seven were the cars I built. So wow. kind of, yeah, I kind of got back into building cars again. You know, we probably we've got eighteen or nineteen cars, dirt cars out there now, but it just it seems like nobody wants to work on them. they just want to blame people instead mm-hmm. of just saying hey you know try something and you can't you know when you we have these three or four guys all in the same town trying to race and, and it's like well you told them this you told them that. i said the guy's 300 pounds and you're 190 pounds I exactly mean, yeah you have a different spring or different shock you know yeah so you got to make it work for you that's always the tough thing is that when you build these cars they still have to get customized to the driver's style Right, and then, and that's what I was going to get to with the IMCA is is Tom up there. I mean, I, I FaceTimed him, and he went through the whole car when I when I did the chassis. I put the door bars in. I, I cut bars out what they don't allow. So I know the chassis, the body. I probably build one of the safest race cars. All my cages are inch and three quarter, all bung seats, door plates, the whole deal. Still floor pans, and I try to keep the safety back into it. What I've learned from NASCAR. So my cars are a little heavier. But uh, I don't say they're the fastest car out there, but they're the safest, and it's only a piece of metal. You can make it go as fast as you want. I've seen enough guys that have been in some big accidents that they'll take a little extra weight and a little more safety over the uh, the opposite of that. I figured out these dirt guys, they'll, they'd rather buy a tire than a brand new set of seatbelts. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, when I started, <laughs> I started teching in 89 at the local track, and, and that was one thing I found out. We were in a $250 to win, basically an advanced street stock class, and guys were telling me they were spending $2,500 on a carburetor, and they had a $100 helmet. <laughs> Yeah. Well, they got to use that to throw it at people. Tony, throw it <laughs> uh, yeah. You said you're going to come up on Wednesday and kind of test the car a little bit, and then uh, racing on Friday and Saturday. Do you guys have any uh, appearances scheduled? Any? You want to come down to a bar with us and, and meet some fans? Well, this tour's light. I mean, I, I figured that. I, I, I'm drying my liver out right now because I figured I'm going to get up there and drink a lot of beer with the guys. <laughs> Oh, Larkin tells me how I'm cooking all. He sent me a bunch of meat, and he told me I cooked it all wrong. So I'm going up there. I want to see if he's a chef. He thinks he is and go up there and cook. Him. I've but, I've heard good things about his cooking, so we'll see. Yeah, I, I'm hearing some stories in the background. His wife, you know, talking about riding horses and stuff when they're drinking. So I, I hopefully I don't get involved in that. But <laughs> that's actually easier to do when you would think, because you don't have to drive the thing; it drives itself. Yeah, but you can get hurt falling off of one of them things <laughs> clear up there. You need a little bit yeah, better well, safety cage than they come with. <laughs> We got to rephrase what you said that that I don't think we can test on that Wednesday or whatever, but we're gonna have to shake it down somewhere. I don't care if it's a dirt field or whatever. But well, they do have an open test on on the Thursday of that weekend. Perfect. perfect. So I think that's, that's we'll, testing too. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the night you'll be shaking it down. Well, so we look for my eighty. How far speedway from there? Because we might have to do a lot of cutting and welding to get the thing right. Thirty miles. Oh. It's not far. <laughs> yeah, thirty miles. <laughs> Perfect. And it's all interstate, so you'll be fine. And you ought to try and make sure you got some time to go through the museum down there. That museum at Speedway Motors is just unbelievable. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's where the car's sitting now. Hopefully they got it out of there and at least dust it off so we, we can have a halfway decent chance. But, um, yeah, I'm not leaving. I'm coming Wednesday and not leaving until Tuesday. So, like I said, I'm driving my, li- I'm driving my liver out right now. <laughs> Getting ready for coming over to I-80. We appreciate that. <laughs> Bring a, bring a whole box of goodies too. You're going to need those if you're drying your liver out. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate you uh, you you picking up and having a conversation with us. Well, you guys are welcome. Hope to see all the fans out there. I mean, it's pretty cool. I've I've been to a couple IMCA races, but nothing big like this. And Speedway Motors has been a big supporter of Saturday Night Racing, and that's you know that's where everybody started out of. So I just can't wait to meet everybody out there in I-80 and uh, see what all this IMCA stuff's all about. Yeah, yeah we're and- we're really hoping the weather holds. That's our big deal out here. It's been way too wet this fall. And, uh, <laughs> not, not on our budget, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I catch up you guys up there and we'll have a beer and I appreciate you guys calling me and uh, like I said, I hope to see all the fans up there. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate your time. Have a good one. Great talking to you again. Bye, but so again, that's Ron Hornaday Jr. You can find him at the uh, Cornhusker Classic coming up this Friday and Saturday. Open practice on Thursday the 11th, and then they'll be doing Friday and Saturday night racing, uh, weather permitting. So just keep a, pay attention to the I-80 Facebook page, and uh, we're I'm going to try very hard to get Ron to come down to Quaker Steak and Lube maybe on that Sunday night uh, after the Cornhusker Classic, and maybe we'll watch the race and, and drink some beers on uh, on the 14th. So uh, the weekend before we'll, we'll watch Talladega down at. Yeah. Uh, I was say, that'd be Dega. 
So maybe we can get him over there and you can come meet and get some autographs signed from him. So thanks a lot to Ron for joining us. You can see him at I-80 Speedway at the Cornhusker Classic. We're going to take a break. We'll be back on the front stretch. Finding a home can be the most important decision in your life. It's the simple factors of neighborhood, garage size, the school district, and commute that get overlooked by most realtors. Those are the aspects that Jim Blazina has been focusing on since 1988. From rental properties to your forever home, the race and realtor will work hard to get you exactly what you're looking for. And he can help list your home for a speedy sale. Contact Jim Blazina today, 402-980-8400 or jblazina at npdodge.com. We all have that coworker that runs their mouth off at how great they are. They shot a five under par, 95 mile an hour fastball, bench press 375, bra. Wouldn't you love to shut them up by schooling them at Joe's Karting? Council Bluff's premier indoor karting track, professionally designed so each corner is your opportunity to embarrass your coworker. Call Buddy for your next company outing at 712 712- 256 5278. Joe's Carding, White Knuckle Racing just across the river on 23rd Avenue next to AMC 17. If you love wings, if you love rings and all kinds of other tempting things, great times, great food, get to Quaker Steak and Lube. Quaker Steak and Lube is the official watering hole for the front stretch and the best place to catch all the NASCAR action today. Open at 11 a.m. with delivery available to Council Bluffs. Great times, great food, get too quick to stay in Feather the brake and get back to the gas. Dan and Dirk are headed into turn three on the front stretch. Welcome back to the front stretch. Heading into turn number three, brought to you by Kansas Speedway. Tickets for the NASCAR weekend, including the Xfinity Series race on Saturday for the Kansas Lottery 300 and the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series race on Sunday, the Hollywood Casino 400, are available now at kansasspeedway.com. Don't forget that Sunday race for the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series is an elimination race. Their guys are going to be up on the wheel trying to survive and not be the four that get eliminated as they want to move into the round of eight and continue their chance at making that championship round at Homestead Motor Speedway. Kicking off all the action that weekend will be the ARCA Series, the ARCA 150 Presented by Menards on October 19th, that Friday night of the event, kicking off at 7 o'clock. You can get your tickets now at kansasspeedway.com. Joining us on the phone now is one of the drivers, local drivers, that's going to be racing down in that ARCA Series race on October 19th, Zach Ralston, coming to us. Uh, Zach, how you doing, bud? Good to see you back at the racetrack. Hey, I'm glad to be back racing again. It feels good to be back uh, in the Kansas ARCA 150 is what we'll be racing in. Uh, we get to run about 150 miles, 100 laps around the Kansas Speedway, and it'll be my second time there, and I'm really excited to go back. I'm kind of scrolling through your Facebook here, and it looks like you were a pretty big fan of what you saw last Sunday at uh, Charlotte, so maybe we could uh, lean on Pat Warren and see if we can get the uh, Kansas Roval worked out for you guys in the ARCA Series. I would love to do it. I would love to do well, it. They'd I have thought to... that was some of the best racing uh, I've seen all year at they'd have... Charlotte Roval. So. They'd have to start it with a K. It'd be the Kroval. <laughs> <laughs> the Kansas Kroval. So real quick, if you don't mind, Dirk and I have a, a friendly uh, conversation going on here. Uh, he's not a big fan of the 48s move. I like the 48s move. Where does Zach Ralston <laughs> land on that? Zach Ralston lands on not a being a big fan of the 48s move. No? Uh, Ta-da! No, All not. knowledgeable people know that, hey, Dan. It's, there's no wrong or right answer. I'm just doing a poll mm-hmm. here. No, come on. Yes, sir. I, in, in my defense, uh, you know, a seven-time champion for Jimmy Johnson, I someone should have been on the radio telling, giving him the option at least a few laps to get before then. Well, just just in case something happened, just in case they got into that situation, you know, he was locked in for the championship. Are you are we going to win the Roval? Or are we going to win the championship? Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. Plus, he's going to Dover, you know, this week where he's won uh, half a dozen races or thereabouts, you know. So he's definitely a threat to win there. Even if they make him drive backwards, he's got a shot to win that race. And uh, <laughs> yes, well, I, I think his last race was at Dover last year in the June race. If I'm not yes, mistaken, I think that was and his he, last he, he started from the back See, and, and I, won. I like guys racing for the win and letting the championship be a consequence thereof. I I, I like that. <laughs> well, but I, get... I think that's what, what the chase is made for. Yeah, I agree. 
The playoffs, uh, you mean? The playoffs? Are, the play- is that what they're made for? Yes, the playoffs. <laughs> That's what the playoffs are made for. Well, we're talking to Zach Ralston, who's going to be, like he talked about, in the uh, Kansas ARCA 150 on October 19th in the ECR SB2 Motorsports ARCA car. The number 11, correct? Uh, yes, sir. We'll be running the number 11 under Andy Hillenberg Racing again. I'll have my crew guys of some hometown guys coming up. We also have some local sponsors uh, stepping on board a little bit, too, to help us out. We're going to announce some of those later at the race, actually, okay. and uh, go from there with the sponsors. But we're really excited about that. Got some got some help for some tires, so we'll be able to go for a top 10 and you know, and, and push push it up there again. We finished 14th at Chicago, so we're really excited to uh, go to battle. We're, we're going to be the underdog again, so we'll need some, some fan support. But I think we can definitely pull a, at least a top 15, go for that top 10. And how's your schedule? Roll out for down there. Do you get uh, like park haulers on Wednesday? Because I know they make that temporary garage down there for you, and uh, uh, then like practice yep. Thursday. And are you going to qualify Thursday or Friday, and then race Friday night? So all there will be no track activity. Haulers will unload, and we'll have tech inspection all day Thursday, and we'll have practice from 10:30 to 12:30 on Friday, and we'll qualify. I believe it was 2:30 qualifying maybe or we might yeah qualify at 2 two thirty, and then we have like a four or five hour break and then the race okay because uh they'll do the qualifying for cup and stuff um, yes sir because i xfinity, think xfinity i believe is there too yeah, yeah xfinity's there but they i wonder if they'll think... qualify saturday morning a couple hours before their race i think's what xfinity usually does down there but okay. uh, it'll be interesting for you guys because you guys don't run the same same tire is what the cup cars and stuff run. So after your practice, you'll end up uh, having Goodyear rubber laid down over your Hoosier. You still guys still run the Hoosiers, right? Uh, no, sir. Now we run the uh, general tires. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. So, well, it's still different yeah. than the Goodyear, so it's still a different tire. And, uh, you know, then you'll come back with that. So that, that'll that change things up for you guys just a little bit. Yes, a little bit. They'll lay some of that rubber down on the on Kansas Speedway, but uh, we I just looked on my phone. We won't qualify till 5 o'clock, so they'll definitely – the track will be slick. A little bit slicker than we will be used to it because our practice being from 10 o'clock till 12 o'clock and our race being at 730 at night, the track's definitely going to cool off, Mm -hmm. especially with this Midwest temperatures. It gets hot during the day and cold at night right now. Yeah, Yeah. I went went and bought a coat in preparation for what we're going to experience in a couple of weeks. (laughs) And while I'm buying it, I'm like, this this isn't going to be thick enough. (laughs) This isn't going to be thick enough. (laughs) Yeah, it it can cool down there in October. I mean, I've been down there in October where it's it's nice, but I've been down there in October where it's 30 degrees, too. Well, I'll tell you what, at Chicago when we ran, we finished 14th, and I I got out of the car, and I was so dehydrated, I, I vomited, so... It, it, was, it was definitely a hot one at Chicago. And you've got a little bit, you talk about being the underdog and when you're you're talking about this. It's not just because you are you don't have the full-time experience that a lot of these guys have to lean on, but you've also got an older style body. Yes, my, my body, I have a, we want a steel body compared to the composite body now. And we lock and down for us quite a bit with the uh, bodies. They, they tend to stick to the track in the corners a lot. A lot better than the old style steel bodies, and they're about a hundred, hundred and fifty pounds lighter, depending on which which one you how you mount it. So uh, we're definitely, you know, we ran really good at Chicago. I could I could tell on restarts that I it made a huge difference. The composite body cars they could get back into the gas a lot sooner than I could, and and you're cornering in at a big place like Kansas Speedway mile and a half track that makes a huge difference Mm -hmm. well and it's it's not that they get to weigh 150 pounds less than you because the body's lighter it's just they get to move the weight where it works for them right and and they get back in the gas sooner too they can get back in the gas sooner. the car's turned it helps turn so the car sets sooner than i can get my car set and also with the fuel injected motors that we're up against too they're they're about 40 45 horsepower more than my horsepower or my motor kicks out so we're definitely down on horsepower. That that affects our straightaway speed too. You sound like so. me at thirty six. You got an overweight body. You got an underperforming <laughs> engine. You got you got an arrow issue, which I definitely have an arrow issue. <laughs> hey, has uh, hey, it, it's all good when we get into the good stuff. You know, we'll, we'll definitely be able to make some noise. So no. right now we're going to concentrate on getting laps and learning. Has uh, NASCAR. Uh, are they taking this over? Is uh, is NASCAR taking it over in the 19 season or the 20 season, the ARCA series? The 2020 season. So okay. we'll have one more in the ARCA racing series. That's why you don't see a lot of online presence from ARCA, and they're not 
doing a lot of social media. They're not doing a lot of videos. Um, I believe they're, they're coming up with a good format for NASCAR to kind of take that over and develop some sort of program and to, then, to help kids get involved. Then you'll get to come to the Rule of the Week Club. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing we hear a lot is about, you know, NASCAR constantly changing the rules and stuff like that. And, uh you know, 90% yes. of the rules they make are safety rules, but every once in a while they come up with an actual rule that's actually pretty good. So Yeah, my, my favorite was have at it, boys. There yeah. you go. <laughs> that there was a go. long overdue rule. Well, yes, sir. It was. You know, it, was, it was a rule they just never <laughs> stated before. That rule been there forever. You know? Right. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, they uh, kind of brought a little attention to it because uh, Kale Yarborough and uh, – the Allison brothers never would have had their Daytona day if uh, it wasn't for have at, have yeah, at it, boys. Yeah, boys have at it. And that was back in the right. 78, I think. It was a few it's years there. ago. I uh, watched it. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking with Zach Ralston cool. of Zach Ralston Racing. Again, he's going to be at the, in the ARCA Series uh, on uh, October 19th at Kansas Speed. But you can get your tickets just $10 each. Doesn't matter where you sit. Doesn't matter how many you buy. Just 10 bucks for adult admission to the ARCA Series race on Friday night. And then you can catch uh, all the action October 19th at, at Kansas Speedway. Zach, you're going to kind of open up and help us out just a little bit with some of our winners. Uh, we talked about it uh, briefly in a text message, but you're going to be able, you're going to let our uh, winners kind of hang around with you guys as you're working on your ARCA car. Yes, sir. Uh, the winner, your guys' winners that you got there, they're going to be able to help kind of kind of see what's going on, see kind of shadow my guys, maybe help push a car. I'll be I'll be right there, hands on to explain things. Uh, talk with the guys, then we'll get them out on pit road. When we come in for tires, they'll be right there. Uh, very hands-on. Um, I'm sure knowing my guys, they'll put them to work if they stand around long enough. So if you need <laughs> if you need any over the wall guys, Dirk and I, we've got some experience. It sounds good. It's not quick experience, but it's experience. Hey, it's my, my experience <laughs> is making sure. My experience is making sure you're in the pit box and that your lug nuts are tight. But I've still got a fire suit. <laughs> cool. Hey, I might have to borrow one of Dirk's. We can get. I might have to borrow, borrow one of Dirk's old Camper Roll Truck Series fire suits. <laughs> no, hey. Mine say Craftsman. Oh, they're that old. They're that old. <laughs> but uh, I have caught tires. I've caught tires for an Xfinity race. So awesome! Thank you. Know. Heck yeah. Yeah, get a good set of gloves and pay it's attention. All that's, you need. It's important. Yeah. Yes, oh, sir. yeah. It's very important. Believe it or not, five years ago, guys, I was training in Marion, Iowa, training some of my good friends just to help pit the car. Uh, we'd have pit practice when everybody got off work. And I showed really? my, I had one of my best friends be the jack man, and another best friend changes tires, and another one hangs. Yeah. So When you've got those best friends that are doing that, is it hard to kind of scold them and, and say, hey, you need to pick up the pace? Uh, well, I own my own tiling business, our tiling and modeling, so I'm learning patience. Do, do your uh, do your best best Kurt Busch or Kevin Harvick imitation. Oh, oh, yeah, that was you guys. I got a video of that actually. My car wouldn't start at Chicago for some reason. We had a little bit of a wiring issue, um, and uh, I ran the whole race without a tack actually. Oh too. my! Just just in case, that's impressive. By the way, that well, is yeah, impressive. It's Pit not, roads, it's yeah. Not easy. <laughs> yeah. But no, it wouldn't start coming off pit road, and that's when the cameras are on you. And they said, "Gentlemen, start your engines." I wouldn't. My car would not start. And thankfully, you know, I cussed pretty loud on the. And I had to have it on camera, and I calmed down. And it was nice to her, and she started right up. And we took off. So <laughs> you gave her the old sweet talk, and she 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 yeah. she gave in. Yep, she gave in. So it's good. Well, listen, man, we we appreciate you joining us on the show and preview and your race down at Kansas. Best of luck to you. We can't wait to talk to you, and uh, we'll see you on the nineteenth. Uh, over at Sounds your great, guys. Yeah, thanks I for uh, you very much. Thanks for taking care of our contest winners, little. That's yeah. very gracious. Hey, absolutely. We'll get them some ZR hats too, and we'll get you guys taken care of. And uh, looking forward to seeing you guys there. And make sure everybody watches the Kansas race, October nineteenth, Fox Sports One, seven thirty, and cheer for Zach Ralston Racing. Okay, well, we'll bring you guys some koozies. We've got koozies. <laughs> I, I already told them I got a hat waiting for oh, them. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Zach Ralston Racing guys. gets a hat. Thanks a lot, bud. Best of luck. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. All right, talk to you soon. Thanks, Thanks Zach. Thanks, Have a good Zach. one. Yep, bye. Bye. So, again, that's Zach Ralston. You can follow him on Facebook, Zach Ralston Racing. Uh, he's out of uh, Iowa, over in the uh, eastern Iowa area. Uh, really nice, soft-spoken guy. And and there's a great video on his Facebook page that he had a, a camera crew shoot, kind of getting a little bit to know about Zach Ralston. And that's 
it, you really get to figure out this guy's life story, and, and there's been some struggles to it. It hasn't been all happy day and, and racing and winning and all this kind of fun stuff. So great story to go watch. Like him on Facebook and Zach Ralston Racing, and then follow him October 19th. If you can't be at Kansas Speedway, root him on on Fox Sports 1. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy that really, with his budget and stuff, should just be weekly racing. Mm-hmm. But he wants more, yeah. so, and he's willing to go work for it and sacrifice seat time and and race four, five, six, seven times a year, you know, and uh, you know, do what he's doing as opposed to just you know running a weekly modified or a late model or something. He's got a great thing going on, and uh, hopefully he can uh, build it into something really big, and we can see him up in the in the upper NASCAR series in a couple of years. You know, yeah, you know, maybe he gets a couple good finishes and gets recognized by Dale Jr. and you know mm-hmm. gets a shot, which is actually what Brad Keselowski did. Yeah, and by the way, his tile business, he does some amazing work. Do you follow that on, on I, I've Facebook? seen some pictures, yeah. He does some amazing work. If you need some tile done, I know I'll be calling him because me and grout and even tiles, that's not going to work out very well. I'll be calling Zach to make the trek over to Council Bluffs to fix up my bathroom one of these years. Yeah, you, you can sleep in my basement while you're here for three or four days. but uh. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in turn number four to talk about, the, uh, to talk about today's race at Dover and maybe get to a couple NASCAR news and notes if we have some time. We'll be back on the front stretch. This fall, experience the suspense as heroes clash metal to metal with heartbreak. Get lost in a drama without the predictable ending. No sappy romance, no special effects. Just one adrenaline-filled day where pure speed drives the plot. Coming soon to a track near you. The Hollywood Casino 400 Playoff Elimination Race. Only at Kansas Speedway, October 21st. Tickets at kansasspeedway.com. Rated you for unexpected. The 2018 season at I-80 Speedway is about to come to an end, but not before one final weekend of racing. The Speedway Motors Cornhusker Classic on October 12th and 13th features the Midwest best mods, sport mods, stock cars, bragging rights, late models, hobby stocks, and compacts. Adult tickets start at $10 on Friday and $15 on Saturday. Kids 6 to 12 get in for $5 both days, and kids 5 and under are free as always. The Speedway Motors Cornhusker Classic, only at I-80 Speedway. Hey, look at that. You're sitting on your couch playing Halo, Madden, or NASCAR while your friends are at Joe's Karting. Each lap is an adrenaline-filled, heart-pumping, white-knuckle experience that you can only get at the Metro's largest indoor karting track. Eco-friendly Honda engines rip you around the professionally designed road course at breakneck speeds. Can you reach the 14-second lap bracket? There's only one way to find out. Put the controller down and get to Joe's Karting, 23rd Avenue in Council Bluffs next to Quaker Steak and Lube. It's checkers or wreckers as we enter turn four on the front stretch presented by Joe's Carding and Council Bluffs. Welcome back to the front stretch. Just about ready to wrap this baby up. Time to talk about the race today at Dover. It's going to be on NBCSN at noon with green flags starting to wave at approximately one o'clock today. And as always, that's weather permitting. We seem to have a lot of issues with weather lately in races. So if you haven't gotten down to Quaker Steak and Lube yet, Today's the day to head down there. You can watch all the NASCAR action. If uh, football is more of your speed, you can catch all the football action on the big screens today with some great uh, NFL and NASCAR specials available. And usually Chris is really good to us. The guys down at Quaker Steak and Lube, they throw the NASCAR race on the big screen in the Brickyard. So if you want to watch that, just tell them you want to go watch the NASCAR race in the Brickyard, and they'll set you up in there with the race on the big screens. Get over to Quaker Steak and Lube, the official watering hole of the front stretch. Uh, let's talk about Dover today. A little bit of a tricky race. Uh, only a mile, but it's still a fast track. Bristol on steroids mm-hmm. is the best way to describe it. And uh, the race would be a very good spot for Jimmy Johnson if he was still in the playoffs. But uh, He could still go out there and get wins and, and still uh, add to his resume. And, well, at and this point, he's a spoiler. Yeah, he's a spoiler, and uh, as I think uh, we mentioned earlier in the show, I believe this was the last place Jimmy Johnson got a win. Mm-hmm. Uh, started at the rear and uh, won the race in June last year, I do believe. I think you're right. I don't have that right in front of me uh, exactly, but I do believe you're correct on that. So he's been well over a year without a win, which is very un JJ like. Mm-hmm. And, and and he struggled right along with Chevy. They've they've all right had with issues. the new body style. But Absolutely. it seems like it's coming back. We're going to find out over the next couple of weeks if Chevy's really made a comeback or if it was just a fluke. <laughs> at, at this race earlier this year, Kevin Harvick picked up the win with Clint Boyer coming home second, Daniel Suarez in third, Martin Truex Jr. in fourth, and Kurt Busch in fifth. Brad Kozlowski, Danny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney, Jimmy Johnson, and Kyle Larson all rounded out your top ten. Uh, Harvick was the big leader, leading six times, 201 laps, 
winning stage one, winning stage two, and sweeping the day with 60 playoff points and seven bonus playoff points. Clint Boyer led three times for 40 laps. Brad Kozlowski was the second most lap leader, led four times with 108 laps. So that's kind of the way it rolled out for the good days. Bad days, Kyle Busch, second in stage (coughs) one, third in stage two, had a drivetrain issue, and he retired early in 35th position. Uh, Our buddy Landon Castle got uh, close to a top 30 finished in the double zero for Starcom Racing, finished 31st, uh, only a few laps down. And it was uh, one of the first races where Starcom had gone ahead and entered two cars. Derek Cope was in the second car and uh, tore it up a little bit, and they didn't weren't able to start that second car at Kansas Speedway shortly thereafter. Absolutely. They were uh, they had to change car, and I think that was the beginning uh, when they had uh, some issues, and they uh, ended up losing a couple of cars in a row, and they didn't have any backups to switch to. Darrell Wallace Jr. also struggled at Dover this time last uh, earlier this year, starting 26th, only finishing 25th. Austin Dillon finished in 26th. Alex Bowman, who's a playoff contender, started 15th, finished 23rd. And uh, I think that's about it. William Byron. Oh, excuse me. Bowman's been eliminated. I'm thinking of Byron. Byron started 17th, finished 14th. Not, not a bad day for William Byron. And they had, uh, if I remember correctly, there were a ton of tire issues on pit road because I think it was in the Xfinity race where Kyle Busch, I think, drove off with a without a tire on. Was that it? I think it was at I think it was at <laughs> Dover. And uh, um, if I'm not mistaken, Brad Kedlowski had moved to the front of the pack, but I think he had a tire issue, and uh, that's what messed up his day. Uh, for some reason, I think of several of them. Yeah. You mean the tire issue? Do you mean uh, not getting a uh, not getting them all off? Tire violations? Yeah, all kinds of tire violations. Just weird things. Well, I mean, that's so, when Kyle Busch drove off without a tire. That's all it turns into mm-hmm. is a tire violation. Right. So seventeen lead changes among six drivers. Uh, like I talked about, uh, Harvick, Keselowski, Bowman even led for a little bit there before retiring. I mentioned he finished uh, what twenty third. I think I said. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, 23rd, uh, so he led a few laps. So kind of gives you an idea as we go into today's race. It's a new round. It's a new set of, of rules or a new set of, uh, of points, and so everyone's now reset to 3,000 points as they come into today's race. Winner plus, advances. Plus their, their bonus points, and then like you mentioned, the winner will advance automatically into the next round. And with uh, it being Dover today, Talladega yeah. next weekend, and then Kansas Somebody I expect to be up on the wheel today is Kyle Busch. He never likes to leave it on the line for Talladega, and he, although has went through that string where he was really good at Kansas, I think he's come back to the group, and he can't count on Kansas being being that race anymore that it was for, for what, about a year or two where he was just so dominant. Yeah, he was very good for a year or two after just totally being a doormat for Mm -hmm. about 10 years, but uh, he's got Kansas feedback figured out a little bit now. Uh, But, yeah, he's... uh, He's very fast at Dover, and uh, uh, nobody wants to try and count on a win for Talladega, even though mm-hmm. Kyle Busch will be fast there. It's just everybody knows what kind of race that is. Yeah, so, it's a, it's a crapshoot. So which... you just as soon get that win at Dover and be done with it. Mm-hmm. And like I said, now this is where J.J. can really have a lot of fun. If he comes in as a spoiler, he can you know take that spot away of somebody automatically moving on, even though he's not going to. Mm-hmm. And, and when, by the way, Jimmy Johnson is now battling for fifth place. Correct. Because when we get to Homestead, only the four top four, the four drivers that are in the champion championship contention will be locked into the top four positions. Everybody else who was in the playoffs is now battling for fifth to sixteenth. And so Jimmy Johnson's he's a wanting to pick up wins to start building on next year, and he wants that fit. He wants to finish the best of the rest. Correct. So he's, he could easily play spoiler. And like we talked about, some of these guys in the back of the field that are in the back of, the, of, the, of that bubble area, the next four that could be eliminated, Jimmy Johnson could easily steal away delicate, uh, important points that they would use to move on to the next round. But instead, since Jimmy Johnson took that win away, they, they may not be moving on now. Yeah, I mean, this, I mean he's going to be out there. You know, the win's it. Mm-hmm. You're going to see him short pitting uh, probably the end of the second stage. You know, he'll pit with two laps to go because he's not worried about stage points. Right. So then he'll be up front and he'll have two lap older tires than anybody. That's not that big a deal. So, mm-hmm. you know, you'll see stuff like that out of JJ and a couple of these others now. So that's today's race at Dover. Again, coverage is on NBC SN at noon with green flag waving at one o'clock. One o'clock. All your picks are due by noon today for the uh, race today at Dover. And again, if you don't have NBC SN, 
and you don't have a streaming service, then you can head over to Quaker Steak and Lube today for all of the green flag action. I want to talk real briefly before we wrap up today's show about the Crazy Five Week Contest. So when we started this years ago, I was sitting there going, you know what? We may have a tiebreaker someday, so let's just throw in some tiebreakers. So I said, okay, here's your tiebreakers. First off, we go off of the most amount of points. If we have two people that are tied, then it's going to be top threes, or it's going to be wins. Wins, correct. Then it's going to be top threes, then it's going to be top fives, and then it's going to be top tens. And after that, if if you have a a finish outside the top ten, you're probably not going to be in a a three-way tie or a tie for the top five position, so it really doesn't matter. Boy, did I not think that far enough ahead. Well... I mean, we've run the contest, what, this is our third year? Yep. You know, and, and maybe going forward it'll be called the Crazy Crewman Contest, <laughs> you know. But uh, uh, this, in in so many spots, was just so far out there. Yeah. I mean, we've had contests where people won four out of the five races. And when you can't pick the same driver twice, that's pretty weird. Right. And this year, Brad Keselowski won two out of the five races, Mm -hmm. so nobody could have had him twice. But the two guys tied for first, neither one of them took him in any of the five races. Absolutely. You know, and they didn't win a race. (laughs) They they had high point guys for the day, which means the stage points brought them up. You know, if they were in second or third or whatever, the stage points gave them the most points for the day. But it's just, this was just an anomaly. Absolutely. Here's the two guys. Dreislick was his name. Dale Smith, who's a former contestant of the season, or who is a contestant of the season long and a former champion. Two-time champion? He's the only two-time champion. Yep, you're absolutely right. And then uh, your brother, Hugh. To start off the contest at Darlington, Hugh ended up taking Hamlin, who finished 10th, and he ranked 48th out of, I believe, somewhere around 70 people. Dale uh, took Kyle Larson, who finished 3rd, and he ranked 2nd. Dale stayed right up there, fell to 4th for two weeks in a row, and then led and tied for the final two weeks. They both ended up the contest with 220 total points, awarded by the, uh, pl- the, the, the drivers that they picked. Driver points, correct. So then we go on to the wins. Neither of them actually picked a race winner, so that one didn't count. The second tiebreaker is top threes. They both had two. One second and one third. The third tiebreaker is top fives. They each had one. Then you have your top tens. Dale had a two eighth eighth place finishes, and your brother had an eighth and a tenth place finish. So they each had two top tens. And we're out of tiebreakers. Right. So I I consulted with our our rules experts at the radio group, and I said, what do I do? Do I go by Dale had the best of the five finishes consistently? They both had a second. They both had a third. They both had a fifth. They both had an eighth. But Dale had one more eighth while your brother had a tenth. And they said, no, you can't do that because that's not in your rules. You're going to have to give them both a prize. (laughs) So I called my guy down at Kansas Speedway, and I explained to him the whole situation. And first off, he didn't believe me. Thank God I got a little bit of reputation with him, so he was just joking around. But he goes, don't worry, we're going to take care of you. We'll get you an extra set of passes. So both Dale Smith and his and his girlfriend are going to go, and your brother Hugh and his guest are going to go as crewmen for a day with Starcom Racing. So after everything was all said and done, we went through all of our tiebreakers, and we still didn't come up with the champions, <laughs> so they both won. <laughs> well, another thing you might want to do is maybe give Starcom a heads up. Yeah, because they'll need Bring to get some extra t-shirts. radios. <laughs> to get some more t-shirts so it's going to be a great experience and we thank uh, kansas speedway so much for for their understanding and their support if you didn't win and you didn't get any tickets they started just i think 49 dollars for simple tickets at kansas speedway kids get in for just uh what is it well, kids under free, kids under twelve are free on Saturday for the right. Xfinity race, and, and I, 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 I don't know if ARCA does that on Friday night, so I cannot answer that. But I know they're they're free for the Xfinity race, and uh, the junior tickets are usually about fifty percent of the adult tickets. Yeah, they're like twelve or fifteen, maybe twenty bucks. It's it really when you go down there, the most expensive thing is not going to be your ticket. Easily not going to be your ticket, and you could take beer and food into the races with you. Uh, they're they're perfectly fine with that. Soft sided cooler, bring in what you want. If it's a long day on Sunday, you can bring snacks and you can bring refreshments, so that way you're not blowing a bunch of money at the concession stand. And everybody can bring in the soft sided cooler. Yep. You know, just don't bring any glass. That's Absolutely. the big thing. It's got to be plastic or cans. All right, Dover but, today on the big screens of Quaker Steak and Lube. Thank you to everybody for joining us today. We'll do it all again next weekend for Dirk Houston. I'm Dan Taylor. This has been the Front Stretch presented by Joe's Cardi. Every race car driver has run into the same problem. It's well past normal parts store closing hours, but you need that one to finish your car. The guys who brought you White Knuckle Racing by the River bring you Joe's Karting Racing Parts and Tire Store. Open until 10 p.m. Monday to Thursday and open until 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. A parts store that fits your after-hours schedule and you can turn a few laps at Joe's Karting while you're waiting for your part to get pulled from their warehouse. Joe'sKarting.com for more information.
The official watering hole of the Front Stretch has you covered any day of the week with the best wings, great burgers, and amazing steaks. Each weekday from 4 to 6 is happy hour, featuring dollar off draft and well drinks plus $4 Luberitas. Mondays are kids' night. Tuesdays are all you can eat wings for $12.95, and the lube even delivers to the Council Bluffs area. Like Quaker Steak and Lube Council Bluffs on Facebook for a full list of weekly events. Get to Quaker Steak and Lube. Mid America Drive, Council Bluffs. This has been the Front Stretch Radio Show, presented by Joe's Carding and Council Bluffs. To contact Dan or Dirk, find them on Facebook at The Front Stretch or email them at frontstretch590 at gmail.com. If you missed any part of today's show or want to hear a previous show, subscribe to the Joe's Carding YouTube page where you can find almost every Front Stretch show. 